So I was really adamant at the beginning, like I'm not cutting a thing out and I'm going to make sure I include everything. And I think that made me become really creative with planning my meals because, (laughs) because I had to make sure in my goal to lose weight, I was, you know, learning a lot about my calories and learning a lot about what level I needed to lose weight. This episode of Grounded in Maine is sponsored by ESG Review. ESG Review magazine is published quarterly in February, May, August, and November, and is available for free in print and digital formats. ESG Review is devoted to environmental, social, and governance strategies, technologies, and investments. ESGReview.net is updated every Wednesday with eight new stories and is home to feature articles, news items, and more. Visit ESGReview.net to stay informed and help us spark the collaboration and awareness needed to develop sustainable economies and communities around the world. There's a place where there's no trouble, no more pain, no more struggle. Grounded in Maine podcast is an open conversation about how we show up for the world. I started this podcast out of a desire to learn new ways to be sustainable because the word sustainability is big. It can be overwhelming and I just wanted to learn, you know, different ways to try to be part of the solution and not feel like it's too late. So I'm talking to people who are doing different things and learning so much. I hope you are too. Hi there. Thank you so much for listening to Grounded in Maine today. My name is Amy Fagan and my guest today is Megan Gall. Megan is going to be talking to us about meal planning and weight loss uh, and a lot of stuff around that. Uh, Megan has uh, a really cool story and she is just a firecracker. So the week that I had um, my audio was messed up and I had to reschedule. Uh, Megan was one of those. Uh, And she was the first one to reschedule, which I super appreciated. And it was actually more fun the second time because we already had this like rapport and we had had a conversation. It just, you couldn't hear it. But so I just, I really, really loved Megan's outlook on everything. And we just had a great time. I just love learning new things sustainability and otherwise. And I just think that Megan's great. Please check out the show notes because she's got links and stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to get to Megan. My guest today is Megan Gall and Megan and I met. Ooh, how did we meet? Was it a Facebook group? Must have been a Facebook group. Yeah. Yep. Podcast. Uh, Some, some Facebook group that connects us. (laughs) (laughs) Some Facebook group that connects us. Um, But so Megan's business is called Partake Meal Planning and Wellness. And I am needing help in the meal planning department. I am a meal (laughs) prepper, but as far as planning, not so much. Um, But so Megan has all kinds of great tips that she's going to share. And, you know, she has good reason for, um, for sharing that. So Megan, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. I love it. And this is, this is try number two for us. Cause last, mm-hmm. mm, <laughs> last week was not my week. So, um, partake meal planning and wellness. What is your goal with that? My goal is to, to help folks who have this desire to reach a happier weight for themselves, a lower weight for themselves for any reason. Um, but who want to do it in a way that feels sustainable to them, feels long-term to them, feels uh, free rather than restrictive. And so my my goal is to really help people find like their way to do it, not the cookie cutter way that's given, you know, not not that program that they have to adopt fully, but more them creating their own version of what their healthy lifestyle looks like. So whole goal is to help people get that kind of very specific action set of action steps that you have to do to lose weight, but do it in a way that is is just not wrapped up in all the diet jargon and the fear-based tactics, all right. of that. Cause I've just really found that that works against what everyone's trying to do. <laughs> like it just gums up the works completely. So I want to take that out as much as I can. Yeah, I totally get that. I mean, I've done 
I feel like I've done all the diets. And <laughs> I remember like whole 30, whole 30 probably worked the best for me, but I was miserable <laughs> because you literally could not eat. If you like went off of it, you had to start over and it was only a 30 day plan. You're like, oh, I could do 30 days, but it's a lot of work. There is a lot of meal planning, meal prepping, I should say, um, which is fine. But like, yeah. and they say, you know, 30 days is enough to um, create a habit and you won't miss the sugar. And let me tell you, I could not wait for that 30 days to be over. <laughs> and I do miss the sugar. sugar my <laughs> I think my first, my first meal was mac and cheese. I had mac and cheese and I had something dessert. Oh, excellent. I could peanut butter wait. and chocolate would be mine. Like chocolate, peanut butter together in the most sugary form possible would be mine. <laughs> No, yeah. wait, with whole, with whole 30, what did, I always wondered this, what do they tell you you should do after the 30 days? Like, what is their ideal version of what you should do? I don't even remember, but you're easing back in. Cause it's to like, like it's non-processed like, or processed foods a little bit, or they still say no. Uh, probably. N- <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly, but I mean, they just don't, it's a, it's an inflammatory, it's an irritant, irrit- inflammation, maybe. Yeah. Al- allergens, allergens. So like no dairy, no alcohol, no sugar, no dairy, dairy. I said dairy twice. <laughs> dairy hurts. Those things that Not tend to like dairy. inflame <laughs> the body are their words. Like the things that like cause the bloating, cause your, you know, s- yeah. cells to go through stress yeah, is that. I think how they put it. Right. And I, as well, as much as I get that, I really, my, um, I don't know if I, I, I struggle between whether I call this childish or, or just like stubborn, like mm-hmm. don't tell me I can't do something mm-hmm. as then I'm going to, I can't think about anything, but so like, don't tell me I can't have sh- sugar is like my downfall. Like mm-hmm. I love sugar. And now I have like, I have crappy teeth, so I can't eat the sugar so much, but um, you know, back then I could. And yeah. <laughs> you know, when you, you say like any sugar at all, no sweeteners or anything. Yeah. That that's going to be like, that's exactly how I felt and still feel like that sense of rebellion. I feel like really comes out when, when the, the external program that we're expecting ourselves to follow, right. like doesn't inevitably doesn't fit like but our preferences, like our taste. Yeah, totally. And it's, it's almost like a lot of those things are, are, I don't know, a lot of those rules kind of get lumped into reaching a healthier weight, whereas they're not truly directly related, you know? So there are things that like you don't have to do in order to lose weight or reach a lower, healthier weight and stay there, but they are things that get lumped in. And then we feel bad when we don't do them. Like I remember very specifically when I was like 230, 235 pounds and contemplating, like starting to make a change towards, um, weight loss. And I, I knew very, you know, from just being immersed in like life as a woman, like as an adult woman, like, you know, you got to cut carbs out. You got to cut like sugar out. These are all the things that you're told to do. Um, and I was very adamant. I'm like, I'm going to find the people who are doing it without doing that because that will not work for me. (laughs) Um, I feel very adamant that I don't want to cut anything out. Like I want to keep all of those doors open for myself because like you, I was like, no, those things are a really important part of my life. Like I find them really delicious. I, I look forward to them. I enjoy like parties. I, I want the cake. Like when we go out for pizza, I don't want to be sitting there alive, right? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'm still alive. Uh, I don't want to be saying no to like the food that is in front of me that everyone else is enjoying that I know is not harmful to me in small doses it's just you know the overall amount of those foods I I want to reduce slightly you know I just want to change my ratio of having them that's all I want to do so I was really adamant at the beginning like I'm not cutting a thing out and I'm going to make sure I include everything and I think that made me become really creative with planning my meals because (laughs) because I had to make sure in my goal to lose weight I was you know learning a lot about my calories and learning a lot about 
what level I needed to lose weight and, and maintain weight. Um, and that caused me to be like, well, if I want that DQ blizzard, what do I want my week to look like in order to make both of those things happen at the same time? <laughs> so I really forced myself to g- gain that skill of like fitting in the sugar that I want. Like I'm, I'm going to make it moderate, but I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to make sure it's there. Right. I mean, even if you just had like half of it mm-hmm. you know, and then put the rest in the freezer for when you like have an emergency, hundred <laughs> percent emergency. emergency, Dairy <laughs> queen emergency. They come up all the time. <laughs> And then you and, have a salad to like cancel it out, right? Yeah, exactly. I think like the the thing about like putting half a thing aside, that was really hard for me too. I can do that more easily now, but it's still extremely against right. my like core. My so. brain my brain yells at me. Yes. Uh-huh. My yes. stomach is like, yeah, that's cool. But my brain is like, but that is leftover. And yes, it will talk to me. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Especially if it's in the house still. So that was another thing I got creative with at the beginning of my weight loss journey, because I was like, well, I know myself. I know that I really love to finish a thing. I, I, if I choose to give it to myself, I'm giving myself permission to have it. So I will have the whole thing. Um, you know, you might've come from like a finish your plate family. I I was known for that. I was known for the, the clean plate club. Yes plate color yeah I love it um it is so common and it's so anti listen to your body (laughs) but it's really I don't know it's it's really ingrained in us and I think I decided to work with that and really get creative with how I ordered things at restaurants so instead of ordering an entree that came with sides I would order the appetizer version and one of the sides or like you know I would make sure that if I ordered something it was the portion size that I was giving myself full permission to have. So that was just like a way that I really got to know myself and to know what I wanted out of my routine and my meal plans um, and kind of created behaviors and boundaries for myself that fit that rather than like, I don't, Weight Watchers wouldn't have helped me with that, (laughs) you know, like Whole30 wouldn't have helped me with that particular self-knowledge that I needed to gain. Right. Whole 30. I mean, Weight Watchers would be like, okay, get on the scale and we're going to, we're going to chastise you while you're standing on that scale. Um, whatever, like count your calories, count them. (laughs) Uh huh. You need to know those points. And these are the, the thing that really grinds my gears about Weight Watchers, um, is their system of like penalizing the choices that are actually not as, um, impactful on your weight as you know they are saying they are with their point values so like a candy bar is gonna be eight 12 points um and it's the same calories as uh one of their bars that has slightly more protein slightly less or slightly more fiber slightly less sugar but they're gonna have like okay yes one of them is maybe gonna help you feel slightly fuller maybe you know but which one's going to be psychologically satisfying and not have me like returning to the kitchen for ice cream after I finish it. Like it's infantilizing. That's what I don't like about the Weight Watchers point system. It doesn't give you the true data. It gives you like a little game, the system kind of system. (laughs) Right. And it's not, it feels like it's not really like understanding. I don't know. It's, it's like not food based. Like you're, Mm -hmm business and that's that's always hard for me like I want it to be about the food and appreciating the food enjoying the food and not like oh "Oh, man that's seven points like I gotta I gotta make that up somewhere else or I've got to stop eating my aunt does Weight Watchers and um she'll be like well I can't eat before two o'clock because then I have a big lunch and and then I just won't eat again yeah so she's like gaming like the day so that it works with this point system but it doesn't really fit with like you know her social life and everything that's really hard to do it's no wonder that we fall off that because it's not it doesn't fit with what we're doing yeah well and then I mean and then just I I mean Weight Watchers does have some I mean my aunt has done really well on Weight Watchers but like um you know keto is like um I couldn't eat carrots like I didn't Mm -hmm. I think I told you I lasted like three days on that because I was like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> carrots 
and the beets and like all those like carby vegetables, but they're, mm-hmm. they've got to be better than like, you know, I don't eat a lot of bread. So I yeah. want those vegetables because they actually have a lot of nutrition. <laughs> they're not empty. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Keto, I felt the same about, and I, I think it's all of these things in common, like what they have in common is that they, they are a set of rules that kind of dance around the real mechanism of weight loss. Like if you're using them for weight loss, they really dance around it and they don't give you the most direct actions for it, which is like, you know, know what you're eating and have, you know, have less in terms of calories and whatever way it's easiest for you to do that. If your way is having really small, but really good high quality chocolate every night, and that's really satisfying for you because it's a treat and you really enjoy it. That's your best way to do it. If you're someone who's like, no, I love to finish my whole big bowl of food and you're going to like have big salads for lunch and for dinner and you're going to have protein to go along with that and that's your way to hit that calorie deficit, that's your way. Um, But a lot of those plans, they just don't let you have that flexibility to find what it is that works for you. And it's like self-discovery, but it's hard to do. (laughs) Right. Well, so... um what, what gives you some authority over this? I'm just, I mean, I have no authority. It is plain to see. I am not someone, <laughs> on the food thing. but um, we don't need authority. We're on a podcast. We don't right. need authority. <laughs> but I mean, Megan, why, why would someone, why would someone follow what you're saying? Like, yeah, that's such a key, like, that's such a key question. Um, my, my approach is all based in like, what, like, I'm not a, not a dietitian, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. Um, but what I am is someone who has lost 100 pounds myself, and maintain that weight loss for since 2018, beginning of 2019. So now we're in 2024. Um, and I've been mired in that kind of that journey of like, understanding what keeps me going and what keeps so many other people in that space, like other folks that I I know from groups and I know from forums, just all the similarities that we have in maintaining that weight, um, that new healthy weight. It's amazing how similar all those stories are. And so you just kind of get this sense of like, okay, these are the habits that keep you where you are after a large weight loss. So no professional experience and no professional, um, you know, certification. Um, I really want to be upfront with all of my clients that I, I do this from my personal experience, what has worked for me and what has worked for other clients in the past. And, um, I think one thing that people are missing when they go to a personal trainer or a coach for help is that that person has never really walked the walk and they've, felt, you know, they, they've not been in that place where they're facing this big obstacle, a big goal that feels insurmountable at the time. And they haven't kind of done that slow plotting walk all the way <laughs> to the end. Right. Yeah. So they're so, like book smart, not street smart. Like they've yeah. studied, they've done lots of studies, but not like felt what it's like to 100%. have that, like that extra weight and like, how am I going to do this? And like, it's just the fact that you've been through it and thank goodness. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. your plan. I mean, I'm just like, I, <laughs> give me thank you. Yeah. And I think the, the personal trainers like, and the coaches who are dietitians and are nutritionists have such a wealth of knowledge of how the body works, what does keep you full, like all, like what are the long-term effects of having this kind of food more like this is anti- um, you know, anti-inflammatory, this has um, antioxidants, this prevents cancer, like they have that information. But the how to implement it is always the downfall of, of that information, because we're, we're not information starved, like it's everywhere, it's, it's there for the taking, like we have we almost do too much research, <laughs> what will work for me, will this go, well, should I try this this time? But Right. Like the actual process of implementing it is where like the coach is most helpful. And that's kind of my, my approach of like the, the small habits. 
um, and building them in, in a slow and plotting way. <laughs> That's my approach. And I think that like, that helps folks. Yeah. I mean, I would think that the, those first really scary hard steps are like key. Yeah. The mindset and like, no, you really can do this and you just need to not, you know, not give up or just, you know, start slow. And that's, you know, Mm -hmm. when they're just like, cut 2000 calories out of your daily intake. Okay. No problem. Yeah. it, It feels like you have to become a different person in order to do that. Like that's how I felt. And that's one reason I made all those like nice boundaries for myself of, you, you know, you're not cutting things out. You're right. just observing, you're, t- you're keeping a food journal. You're looking for what you're willing to do rather than what you feel like you have to do. That I think uh, was a really helpful way to get over that first hurdle of getting started. And that's what I, that's kind of the environment I try to create. Right. And I don't want to say, I mean, I, I just want to say I'm not poo-pooing all diets and to get in general, yeah. like they all have, you know, positive things about them. It just, it does not work for me. I, I can't, I can't do the all or nothing mm-hmm. um, personally. I need to, I need the sugar. And I, <laughs> I need the sugar. <laughs> sugar. I yeah. I'm a dessert every night gal. Are you a dessert every night gal? I am not, but I could be. <laughs> I, I could be tempted very easily. Mm-hmm. If dessert was available. You better believe it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my that's my long held kind of <laughs> value. I'm not saying it can't change at some point, but I'm still making it work with that. So we're gonna keep it in. Right. I mean, yeah. We we in the as the the days get longer. Like right now, it's light until almost seven p.m. Like we usually yeah. eat dinner at seven o'clock, and I'm just like, I'm I'm done after that. Like. If I, if we had dinner at like five 30 or so, I'd probably need something later on. Yeah. And I think that's another thing that that's demonized a lot, like the eating, um, close to bedtime <laughs> and it, it gets lumped in to weight loss, but it doesn't have to be like that. That's really helpful for folks who like are bothered in the middle of the night. They wake up because their, their body's digesting. Like th- there's all sorts of reason that eating not so close to bed is helpful, but weight loss is not one of them. Like that's, you know, it's not directly related. So it feels like one of those extra things that we put on our plate that make the whole thing seem harder. So I love dessert is my, (laughs) is my moral of the story there. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So what is your dessert of choice? Is it the, the fancy chocolate? I, so what if I, so this week I I usually plan my desserts. I put them on my meal plan. That's important. Uh, so this week I put homemade granola. I put dark chocolate bark with like um, nut butter and it swirled in it. What else did I put? Oh, and I put leftover Easter desserts because my sister made these awesome lemon blueberry blondies for Easter celebration. <laughs> and so we had those yesterday for our dessert. Um, that was fantastic. So those were the things that were on my fun foods section of my meal plan this week. <laughs> Lemon blueberry is one of my favorite combos. And it's the time, tis the season for lemon blueberry. Mm. (laughs) Are you struggling to manage your personal finances on top of everything else? Say hello to Coach Connor. Get tailored support to finally conquer the financial stress. It's time to take control and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Reach out to Coach Connor at Progress Solutions now and start your transformation. See the link in the show notes for how to reach coach Connor. As a coach, you're coaching mm-hmm. folks. Um, meal planning is, is like key for you. Like that's a big, that's a big part of the the plan for you. Uh, and so part of that is um, <clears throat> geared around food waste. I know that we, we mm-hmm. had talked about this. We had a cool conversation last week. But, <laughs> Um, so part of that is about reducing food waste. And so, um, can you talk about that a little bit? So I don't fumble it. Oh yeah. Uh, (laughs) totally. Um, I think like meal planning came to my life as like the perfect tool to all these intersecting values that I had. And one was like my, um, excitement about like where I was moving with my weight and my, you know, seeing how this habit would help me kind of keep the whole week in mind when I was 
planning and hitting my goals. Secondly, I'm a frugal gal and food waste is something that just, I think it must be related to the clean plate club. Don't you think? Like it hurts. It hurts. Yeah. To have food left over. Oh yeah. My God. It's yeah, my heart, <laughs> like I feel it, my chest, the stress builds up. Um, if I see something in the back of the fridge that I'm like, oh, no, I let it go bad. <laughs> oh, it's hard. And when you see like that we bought a condiment that we already had. And they're too open. And they're too open. And you're like, <laughs> um, so that was the other piece. <laughs> That's the other value that I think meal planning really helps with because It just helps you inform your grocery shopping so much better. Um, You're forced to look at your pantry, your freezer, your fridge before you go to the store. You shop those things first. You end up spending less money because you, you are like, oh, I have chicken breasts in the freezer. I have ground turkey in the freezer. I have, um, you know, X vegetables. I can actually cook three dinners from that. I have to buy less this time. Um, so that's such a huge benefit that heals my heart from, <laughs> from seeing things rot in the fridge. Uh, Cause I don't really buy anything unless it has a purpose. Like I have a purpose in mind for it. Um, and I guess thirdly is like this value that when we bring food into our home, like we don't want, we don't want to be just letting it and not have a use for a human being or, you know, a furry friend or something like we want it to actually serve the purpose that it was farmed, you know, raised, yeah. slaughtered, <laughs> I didn't, I'm sorry, farmed, raised, you know, brought to your home for like, you want it to, I don't know. I, I, I just felt really strongly that like food waste is not just helpful for the budget. Like it's, it's, it's uh, handling food waste, better is helpful for you know the world it's helpful for how we how we all live as humans so it's almost like the moral imperative there (laughs) okay I am down with that I mean I I think that you and I were like destined to me I feel like (laughs) we're the same person minus you've actually done what I've been wanting to do for years uh so but um one of the and I totally it's like a for me, it would be like a control thing. Like I can, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's so many things that I can't control hormones, my crappy teeth or whatever. Like there are things mm-hmm. that we can't control. And then there are things that we can control. And so that's what, when I get really anxious, what I do is typically clean or cook. Yeah. Oh, I wish I cleaned. I wish I was that. <laughs> but it's just something that I, I have, you know, I can, I can control and I can fix that. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas some things I just can't. Yeah, the fact that you say that, I think it really does play into this desire for control. Absolutely. So it's always, so when my approach to meal planning is more of a menu rather than uh, a rigid set of rules, um, I think that is key for, for making it feel like a kind action for yourself rather than, uh, um, you know, a box that you've put yourself in. Like that's, a terrible feeling like oh no I said I'd have grilled chicken and broccoli today <laughs> like that's it is that what I said I <laughs> what <laughs> and then you're like boxed in you're like well it's Wednesday that's what I said I'd have that's what I bought but um my approach to meal planning is always like we're gonna put some options here and we're not gonna give them specific days we're gonna we're gonna just say we have them in the house and I think that that really takes the control reflex down a peg which is always nice because I don't know I'm someone who I think partially I was so successful at the beginning of weight loss because I had that urge to control (laughs) like I'm going to journal religiously I'm going to hit my calories religiously that I am glad that I have brought that down a few pegs and brought a lot more kind of self-kindness self-understanding and balance with that um but all all that is to say like meal planning is really great as an action that that you can control and so it's nice to do it in a way that doesn't feel like super super controlled you're not controlling yourself you're just taking an action that is within your control that's how I like to think about it wow (laughs) 
I like that. <laughs> so you've taken it down a few pegs. Is it still as equally as successful? The meal planning or the food journaling or everything in general. <laughs> well, you're saying in the beginning you were so successful because you were journaling because you were mm-hmm. super rigid with the um, the calories and the and the meal planning, all that stuff. But so you said you've you've taken the the c- control down a little bit. Is it still equally as effective? Yeah, I think I think it in fact is even more effective um, because I got really clear on what I was okay with expecting myself to do every day and what I was not okay with giving myself that, that task. So I think within a few months, I was, I had come around to the understanding of if I'm not willing to do this going forward to keep the weight off, then it's not something that I should make a necessary part of my uh, daily routine, if that makes sense. Like I had to learn, like, realistically, I, I am never, I am not going to be in a position where I can perfectly hit my week of calories. Like I wanted to, like, I am never going to be in that position every single week of my life. There's always going to be times that are out of my control. And in those cases, the helpful skill there is not being perfect with my calories because, that's impossible. The helpful skill there is how do I notice um, when it is back in my control and bring it back? Um, So it's almost like, how do I forgive myself for what happened or acknowledge that there's nothing to forgive myself for (laughs) and say, when is it possible for me to do those things that I know make me feel good and help me keep myself in a healthy weight range? What can I do right now? So that skill of like saying, if if my ideal preferred habits are not possible, what can I do? And then doing those and being okay with that, with that lower level of focus, that skill is super helpful in, in long-term weight maintenance because you bounce back faster. You, you don't get dragged down by the perfectionist. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's, that's a skill that people or maybe skill. Is that the right word? It's something that people. I think it's a skill. I think you could practice uh, it. Because it, we are so, um, we're so inclined to just like trap talk ourselves. Like, Mm -hmm. why did you do that? Like you ate that whole, you ate that whole pint of Ben and Jerry. (laughs) (laughs) I think I was telling you before, you know, I ate seven cookies, you know, seven girls, Mm -hmm. whatever. And maybe I should have eaten just three, but you know what? I ate seven. I can't take it back. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And it's like the next, I I can't remember where I first heard the phrase, but it is like, take the next right action. Ooh, I love that because it just, it, it lets you just let go of whatever happened right before and just say, what is it in my power? And that's a really hard thing. Cause we are so conditioned to like use the past to inform our actions next, you know, like the immediate, <laughs> like, right. right. And maybe that was helpful when we were like, you know, evolutionarily less human than we are now. Like maybe that was helpful in caveman days right? Um, when you had to be like, okay, I guess I shouldn't touch this burning log of wood. Um, I'm going to use that to inform my next moves. But I think sometimes it really works against us because we get overly focused on what just happened and we forget to use all that energy on what we can do right in that moment, which is, that's within our power, but whatever just happened is totally not in our power anymore. Right. 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 Um, Mm -hmm. wow. And so another one of the, um, the points that you had mentioned was, um, eating in relation to what your body needs, not more. I, I feel like I've said that's my downfall and I feel like it's all my downfall, (laughs) But like (laughs) portion size is a, is a big one. Mm -hmm. Like I, if there's something that I really like, I'll keep picking at it. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's, and I think, um, I think this idea of like eating in relation to what your body needs one at first, it did not really fit my value system at all because, uh, (laughs) <laughs> one, because I, I still kind of think like this is somewhere in my value system somewhere. There's an indignation when 
you hear about like, oh, they're a growing boy. They, you know, they have all <laughs> the boys get get all the passes for eating the huge portions. And, you know, the girls get the dainty sandwiches. That's like our very simplified idea of what women eat and what men eat. So in my value system, like I'm a, I'm a strong feminist and I'm like, Hey, that's ridiculous. Like, how dare you tell me I can't eat this portion? Let me show you. I can eat this calzone. Watch I can me. eat two calzones. <laughs> um, and I remember like in my early adulthood in college, like definitely having that as a point of pride. Like I can eat, I can keep up with any of you. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, I can eat this whole pizza and yeah. you know, I can eat anyone under the table when it comes to Exactly. And so that was in my value system. And I associated it very strongly with feminism and being a strong woman, which is so funny. Like, I agree with it in a little bit, still a little bit, but I have evolved my thinking since then. Um, And I think the value that I attach to eating in in the way, in the portions that my body needs, I think that really came about because I saw how I felt at 230 pounds. And I saw the, the way it was changing my behavior, the way it was causing me to super uh, question my competence with other people or how people saw me. It caused me to think that anyone I was talking to was discounting what I was saying because I was larger. Um, That was, that was huge. And um it caused me to say no to going out with friends or say no when I didn't feel my best or I couldn't find something to wear. And that's not really rooted in the weight itself. It was rooted in like how I felt about myself. Um, But part of that was like taking charge of something in my life and making something happen to change it. Um, And so that was like, I don't know. Uh, That was a way that I started to move towards changing my mindset on um, what was really healthy for me. Um, so instead of thinking of this large pizza as like, I'm going to eat this for feminism, (laughs) (laughs) instead of looking at it that way, I would, um, kind of look at it and say, you know, I'm going to eat this to serve myself. Like, what do I need today? Like, there's a piece of my long-term goal where I want to, you know, slowly lose weight over time. I want to reach a healthier weight and say yes to things. I want to make sure I can travel the world. I can make, you know, without having to get like two airplane seats um, or to have to get a seatbelt extender. I want to make sure I can go try that. Like, I don't know, climb that mountain. I I, I don't want to climb a mountain. <laughs> I want to go hike though. I do want to hike. <laughs> I'll climb lots of stairs. I want to climb the leaning tower of Pisa. If you're allowed to, are you allowed to do that? Some one of your listeners will you know in sure France in. there's a place with a million steps. My sister did. Well, I want to do that. <laughs> See, so I think I started to associate the portion sizes as more of how can I make this enrich my life in different ways other than just loving the taste. Like that's a, that's an enrichment for your life. Like experiencing a lovely food and really loving that taste. That's definitely enriching. Um, but how can I balance that with the other things that are enriching? So putting myself in a healthy position where I can travel and love life and go like speak to someone and feel heard and feel equal to them, you know, and I know there's a lot wrapped up in that. And there's a lot of growth involved in feeling that way when you're, (laughs) when you're talking to someone else, but it was a way of, of taking hold of like how I could eat for myself and then equating that to my long-term goal of treating myself nicely. Ooh, I love that. Um, the, when you said that, um, you know, not even, not even talking about portion size, well, sort of talking about portion size, but like seeing that plate of food as nourishing you and making things possible for you. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's really powerful. It was, it was a, a different, a, a different way than I had been seeing food before completely. Um, and I think it really ties in. <laughs> Do you know those, um, you know, those like food challenges where people go to like the steakhouse and they get like the 64 ounce steak <laughs> and they have like right. an if hour to finish it. 64 ounce steak, you can, you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there are people doing that all the time. There are people who just, their job is to like be a content creator and just go 
and like do all the food challenges. And of course they also are bodybuilders because those are the only people who like can do that. Right. <laughs> who can do it? Who's using all that cal- those calories? Um, so viewing those now really hits me in the sustainability and like eating in the portion size that that treats you and the world nicely because there's such a sense of food inequality across the world. And there's such a sense of there was uh, labor that went into getting that food there. And this is how it's being used, like to have someone stop themselves into oblivion or likes. And you like, know, they're going to throw that up as soon as the camera's off. Probably. <laughs> Like, this is different than, the, like, a pie-eating contest than, you know, in the 40s. Like, this is different. This is a different level. And so that really brought that um, realization back into focus for me because I saw that p- popping up recently in, in my friend's Instagram feed. <laughs> and so that was, um, it really reminded me, I'm like, portion sizes are kind of political in a way because it's really tied up with with class and equality as well. Like, just... I don't know. I'm I'm mixing them all together in my brain, but it really does feel like being responsible with what I'm choosing to nourish myself with and not nourishing myself past enjoyment, I think really is tied in with that. Hmm. I don't know if other people, I'm sure lots of people feel that way, but that it came up in my brain and that's how I've been thinking about it recently. Well, it's an, it's an interesting um, angle to look at it. I think you know, you can say, I don't really need this, but then you're also saying, why am I overeating, overindulging? Like when there are people, you know, it's just like, it's an em- empathetic stance. Yeah. Like these people don't have what they need. And here I am like with extra. Or yeah. Something like that. Y- yeah. And I think it's, it's almost like if we're it's wasted if we're taking it in and if we don't, and we don't need it in a way, like not to say wasted, like it, it, yeah. we do need, you know, we need fat storage. We need, <laughs> we need some cushion for our bones. Like we need that stuff. That's very important. And there's a lot of studies that say that if you're slightly overweight, that's even more healthier you know, <laughs> than being like skinny, you know, <laughs> it's very interesting. Right. <laughs> um, Good. so that's important, but, um, but there's this sense of like, when it gets to a point of eating that has nothing to do with hunger or nourishment or fulfillment, and it's, it's totally divorced from that, it feels like a waste. Uh, and that kind of hits me. (laughs) So yeah, I I think that's something that it's a viewpoint that if more people kind of looked at it and pulled it apart, I'm sure there'd be an evolution of it where it's, you know, a nice, a nice theory (laughs) that would be helpful to people. (laughs) Sure. Um, and I still, I still do it. And I think about other people too. I just still eat. <clears throat> but then, um, so another, you had touched on, um, really briefly about, um, journaling. And so that's mm-hmm. another one of your, your big key parts. Uh, so how, how does food journaling fit in? Ooh, food journaling to me uh was one of the key habits that i used at the very beginning um to start understanding what i was taking in to help me you know kind of pre-plan my day so i would use my journal almost as a pre-planner to understand how the day was going to play out and to execute it if i could um and then food journaling since then has kind of stayed with me as a almost a nod to being aware of my, um, you know, how I'm, how I'm nourishing myself because there's a lot of, there's a lot of temptation to kind of forget about bringing yourself good food. Like we're incredibly busy as a species, as a, the Western society like loves to do their 60 to 80 hour work weeks. That's easy for people to spend their time on. I don't want to say easy, but that's like common for people to really spend most of their time on but we really forget about feeding ourselves to actually fuel that 60 to 80 hour work week with, you know, like imagine how much better you could show up uh, if you like had three solid meals and enough water to keep your body going. (laughs) Like It's amazing how much better I think we would all do our jobs if we were all kind of thinking about 
the meals first to fuel what we were doing. So I use food journaling as like a, a daily kind of dipping my toe into that piece of my life every single day, um, because it's important and it deserves a spot in every single day. So yeah, there are lots of different ways you can do it. If you're interested in weight loss, it's very direct to know your maintenance calories and then understand how much you need to aim for to lose weight. But if you're not interested in weight loss, you're just interested in fueling yourself well, or if you want to lose weight, but um, kind of want to do it in more of a intuitive way. I don't want to say intuitive. I don't know. Less of a numbers driven way. <laughs> I love numbers. So it, it works great for me. But um, if you want to journal. What was your major in school? So I was a history major, but after I, um, like my last job before becoming a health coach, I was working at a nonprofit on their strategy team as a data analyst. So that's probably related (laughs) in some way. Um, yeah, a little bit. Uh, so you can, but you could journal without that. You totally can. Like uh, a lot of folks love to take pictures as their journaling action. Like here's what I enjoyed today. Some people really like to pre-plan the day and then check off what happened and what didn't happen. Um, Some people really like to kind of write themselves their long-term goal at the beginning of their food journal to keep that in mind. Any way to do it is helpful. I think it just brings that sense of mindfulness and really makes any change you're going to make come from a more informed place and a more, I don't know, uh, more a, a place that is centered in the knowledge that you have of yourself. Like it's more realistic for you. That's such a nice way to put it. (laughs) I try. When I think of of journaling my food, I think of like holding myself accountable and that makes me feel scared and sad. (laughs) Yeah. It it feels like you have to, like you're the mean parent for yourself. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's interesting because like our desire to reach a healthier weight, like for me, it wasn't, that, that wasn't a mean parent. That was someone who was looking out for my future. It was someone who was looking out for my ability to love life. And so it's kind of the difference between a mean parent and a, the nurturing parent that's going to do it in a way that's like fun and light. And like, let's keep laughter in this. (laughs) Like, let's keep, I don't know, let's not get perfect about this. Let's make sure that this is just a tiny part of the day. It doesn't, define your whole existence. Don't judge yourself based on what you put in there. That's a whole different way to look at food journaling versus the the mean parent. Right. Yeah. And I think that's probably uh, all, I mean, so many things are just mindset. Like it, it doesn't have to be that way, but that's just how I'm seeing it. Not yeah. looking into it. It's like, it's sort of like a um, justification to not do it. Like I don't need mm-hmm. I don't to, I don't need myself to tell me I'm doing things wrong. I'm going to be a bad person at w- losing weight. Yeah. I mean, it, and it's something that we all are conditioned to do as humans. Like there's this, like recently I've, I've been wanting to do this certain work project and I've been really good at avoiding it. Really, really good. And it's all- so good. I've done two podcast interviews. With <laughs> I love it. Um, but yeah, it's something we all want to do because like, we, we, we know that if we start to look at it, it's going to start change and change is uncomfortable and no one likes discomfort completely. So, uh, it's just one little way to kind of look at it slightly differently to make it slightly less uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's how I look at it. I think that if I were to start journaling my food, I think I would have to like write that write your reasons down so that I remind myself, I might even write it on every page. Like, yeah. Um, just so that I'm, I, if I look at it and I'm like, oh, you know, I should have done that, or I didn't do that, or I, um, I ate too much of that or whatever. Like, I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, Megan said, this does not have to be mean parent. So, um, (laughs) I I think I really would have to do that because on the, I'm, I'm a person who needs like constant reminders, not like you have to pay your bill. You have to pay your bill. You have to pay your bill, but like you're doing okay you're doing good things and stuff like that. Like I just, I am that I'm just that needy of a person. Um, but I just, I have the the voice in my head, the negative voice. And so I need something to remind me. Oh yeah. Get that. 
And I think putting that every single day is, is brilliant. Like, I think that's a great idea because it really does. It's, it's almost like, um, you're reworking some neurons in your brain that are in the habit of firing electricity in a certain way. <laughs> it's not necessarily a true or helpful thought, but it's used to doing it. So you're forcing it to learn a different path by doing it. And that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and it would just, yeah, it would just be something that I would see as I'm thinking, <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Like this is just, it's just one day we can. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Oh my gosh. The mindset. I, I hate, like, I feel like I hear it everywhere, but oh, it's true. I want to change my like thoughts. Said, it's just part of us. Um, totally. But so let's see one of the things. So you were saying that um, I think the message that you wanted people to take away was uh, that changing a few habits can bring uh, more healthy. And what does it say? More, <laughs> more healthy <laughs> and reduce, bring more health and reduce your footprint on the world. Mm -hmm. And I love that because it's not saying like, you have to do all the things Mm -hmm. you're saying a few changed habits. Yeah. Like that's kind of how I found that, um, that intersection of my values in meal planning. It was, you know, it helped me value my health and it also served my desire to like, feel like a good person and actually contribute to to not making the world like slowly crumble into the ocean. You know, like I know it doesn't make a huge difference, but it is a small drop in that. Like, it makes me feel better anyway. <laughs> it do- It's a small drop towards that. And I think that's like what all humans are trying to do. We're trying to do a, a small little drop towards the values that we want to see in, in the world. So I think meal, meal planning was that little way to really make that happen, um, in my life. And I think it's something that is a, it's a good intersection for people who also feel that way. Ooh. Wow. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. So I, I just love that because I'm, I'm all about that. Like we don't have to do all the sustainable things, but we can all be doing something and it doesn't have to be huge. We can all be doing little, you know, there are so many smaller things that we can do that all are, they, they add up. Oh, totally. You know, yeah. They don't or recycling or, you know, you have solar panels or whatever, like all the, all the little mm-hmm. things, they still add up, you know, you don't have to have this 10 acre farm with solar panels covering your whole property. <laughs> uh, I mean, so many, so many of us can't afford to be that way. And that's, it's, and, and it's okay. And when you get one of those changes under your belt, like one of those small things, like if you become really good at meal planning, or if you become really good at making all your power come from solar energy, like maybe you've mastered that and you have it down to a system. Now, aren't you in a better place to make the next change and to like know how to make it uh, in a sustainable way? I think it it builds stronger when we start small. It just makes a better foundation. Yeah. Well, it just, it makes it more attainable if you, you know, like you were saying, you know, do one thing. And then, you know, once you get that like solid, Mm -hmm. something else is going to be like, no big deal. Like I'm already doing this. This is like breathing. Why Mm -hmm. why would I take on something else for sure? Gosh, dang it. I love that. (laughs) Um, All right. So Megan, when I say the word sustainability to you, what does that mean? Mm. So sustainable to me from like, first glance is always like it lasts forever like it lasts long term like it's not gonna fizzle out like that's kind of how I think of it um and I really apply it to making changes in your life like if you're gonna make a change you want it to last you don't want it to feel like you have to go all out and then you're burnt out and then you fall off so Sustainability to me is making those small changes in a way that feels like it will last long term and how I connect it to, um, I don't know, the rest of the the way the rest of the world sees sustainability, which is like, let's make sure our, our earth is actually going to last us. Let's, let's make sure we're not screwing ourselves over with our resources. Um, I don't know. I, I see them. I see them as related, but I think they're both really focused on let's do what we can right now today to make that long-term vision actually feel possible. So that's kind of how I connect them. (laughs) Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, This, 
<laughs> this has been amazing. I twice. Love it's it. Amazing. Yes. Twice. Good um, for us. We did good. Um, and so if somebody is interested in learning more, following you, maybe getting involved in uh you know, getting some coaching like me, I'm gonna have <laughs> just a couple days. Woohoo! Um, but uh how can people find you? There are a few places. So number one, if you are on Instagram, um, my handle is partake underscore foodie. Um, so I share, you know, uh, strategies there. And if you would love to start meal planning yourself and kind of want other people doing that alongside you, I have a free club where we do um, a live every week and we meal plan together. So if you're interested in that, you can go to my website page for that, which is partakemealplanning.com slash join the club. Um, yeah. And on that website, you'll also find all my information about coaching. So you can always book um, a consultation in case you're interested in seeing what it could look like for you. So cool. So yeah. cool. I'm very excited about that. Um, Pumped. <laughs> like, I need a direction, I guess. <laughs> But so thank you so much. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. I love, um, I love being creative about the sustainable angle, uh, because it is so, there are so many ways we can do it. Like it doesn't, it touches everything, doesn't it? It really does. And, uh, you know, this is a, it's something that means so much to me. Food means so much to me. Um, obviously food means a lot to me, but it means a lot to a lot of people. And the fact that, um, you know, we can eat good food and take care of ourselves and like be intentional about it and um, just plan a little bit better. And like you said, the um, changing a few habits, I'm scared for, I'm going to be totally honest, but (laughs) I am, I I might might really just write it on every day. You should, it's the kind parent. We're going to do it. (laughs) Love it. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Oh my gosh. This has been, I love, I love that you have a different view on it than, than what we've learned our whole lives. Thanks for letting me kind of talk about my corner of it. I think that, that it's, it's a great conversation. It was awesome. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, for sure. I, and I, I love trash talking diets. I, it's <laughs> me too. And it's, I do it, I do it out of like, you know, I do it because I can't succeed in them, but I, I know that they all have their, their good things about them that work for some people, but. They don't. We, we, we want a little rant. We love a little rant. <laughs> All right. Very good. Uh, Megan, thank you again. Um, I will not make you come on to do this conversation again, but I will. Talk <laughs> to you days. And, yes. um, and everyone, uh, Megan's information is all going to be in the show notes. So uh, definitely check those out. Uh, you can find her on Instagram at partake underscore foodie. And, um, yeah, the rest of the information is going to be in the show notes and get the free stuff and learn how to eat better. Do it. <laughs> Come see me. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I just want to take a second to thank my guest again for for speaking with me and sharing such great information. I love having these conversations with folks. I also want to thank Buzzsprout for hosting the podcast, for Jane Bolduck and her music genius, for Becca Coffron and her award-winning artwork. And thank you for listening. I appreciate that so much. Uh, Please check out the show notes for any links and extra information. Uh, And uh, if you would like to follow my guest and uh, find out more about them, I'm sure they would love the, the follow. Um, and if you would, if you don't mind leaving a rating or review wherever you're listening uh, and just help to get this podcast in front of new eyes, that would be amazing. I would really love that. And uh, feel free to reach out to me on the socials and uh, let me know what you're thinking. And if you would like to be a guest on the podcast, please let me know that. I would love to have a conversation with you about sustainability. All right. Uh, Thank you again. I hope you have a great rest of the week. There'll come a day My mama told me When I find love To have
love and hold me a heart that's strong and so sincere just tell me how do I get there from here oh tell me Thank you. 